hide behind intellectual property law to keep scientists from doing rigorous testing that could produce results contrary to their scientific, uh, their commercial interests. Isn't this anti-science? Yes. These companies intentionally mislead the public, trumpeting only the findings of the scientific organizations that support their views, while ignoring the ones that express doubts about their safety. Isn't this anti-science? Yes! These companies orchestrate smear campaigns against scientists who do produce experimental results showing the dangers of these products. I'd say this too was anti-science, right? Yeah, isn't this anti-science? Yes! So don't let anyone call you anti-science because you insist on scientific testing for each, every genetically engineered food on the market. And this means independent testing with the necessary safeguards to assure adequacy and impartiality. We are the ones who are for science. We are the ones who are for honest science. And Monsanto and its allies, they're the ones who are anti-science. Their day is almost over. And I met the CEO of Monsanto, and I said to him, you know, Mr. Grant, it takes a big man to make a big and powerful company, but it takes an even bigger man to acknowledge when something's not working and to go into a new direction. And he said, and oh, and I said, and so I look forward to the day when Monsanto goes in the direction which does not harm our children. And he said, well, we have all kinds of science and we, we're going in new directions all the time. And I said, we have science that your products harm our children. And just consider if you're wrong, the, reperdu the repercussions to your company are enormous and the repercussions to the world are huge. And he said, well, if you're wrong, you're scaring an awful lot of people. And I said, if I were wrong, and I'm not, then all the, the reper only repercussion to the people is that they're eating organic. And there is nothing wrong with organic food. It is perfect the way it is. We need to remind Jan Schakowsky politely She's our French. She's the one who first got labels, in fact, food ingredients labeled on all our, you know, mandatory uh, ingredients on our labels in the first place, on our food packaging. It was her. And she deserves a lot of credit for that. But, you know, politicians need a good nudge in the side. Sometimes they need a push. That's what we're going to do. Monsanto and many of the biotech industries that are trying to sell us their seeds have corporatized and in many cases privatized ownership of what is biological, something that belongs to nature, something that no man can possess. And we're here to take back our food system to say we will not stand for the commodification of the things that are the most important to us. The food that we eat and the water that we drink, water that we do not want to drink polluted with pesticides and agrochemicals. So we've worked hard to promote SB 734, the Genetically Engineered Food Labeling Act here, in our, Act here in our Senate. We have gotten many, many letters written by people that are here right now that we will deliver to the Senate President, uh, John Cullerton, next Friday. Um, uh, let's hear it for John Cullerton, the man who is preventing us from seeing food labels. We give him a boo! We don't really know what's happening with our food and that's why it's really important to garden if we can, because then we know where the food is coming from. Another issue related to food security is we probably all here buy organic when we can, and we know that organic is not cheap, right? It's usually way more expensive than conventional, conventionally grown produce. Um, so if we start gardening and we have gardens, then we, our neighbors see it and then we can talk to them about these kinds of topics. Um, you go to the grocery store and you have to buy these pears and the pears are $1.99 a pound, but you can have a pear tree and have pears for 20 years plus, or your tomatoes, and we can save these heirloom varieties that are quickly disappearing because we are a monocrop culture. The bad news is that last night the U.S. Senate uh, passed uh, fast Track, Trade Promotion Authority. If you didn't know it, it, it happened uh, close to midnight. Um, well, actually, about 10 p.m. But in any case, it's now going to the House, and it's in the House 
where we have a better chance of stopping it, we knew that early on. Um, and what TP, what, what, what Fast Track does is the House will have to cede its authority over trade, international trade, something that they would have to do, they would have to vote to cut their own responsibility. That means they can cut and run. They don't have to take responsibility. The objective of companies like Monsanto is not quality of food, but about greed, control, and monopoly. It's not to protect life and environment, but to protect their money. Thank you everybody so much for coming out. We have a really good turnout today. I'm so excited to see all of you. Um, I am gonna back up what that doctor just said because I know from personal experience that everything that she just said is true and I don't need anyone to approve it or put a stamp on it and tell me that it's true because I lived through it with my little girl. She was the one with the bullhorn yelling at the GMO people if any of you guys saw her. <laughs> She, on her sign, she wanted to draw a picture of herself in the hospital hooked up to all of those IVs and pick lines and the oxygen. For the last three years, in about two weeks, it'll be three years that she has been completely healthy. And it's because I cut all of that garbage out of her diet. It was killing her. I almost lost her. I spent seven days in the PICU, no sleep, I was losing her. She pulled through and I decided that we really needed to make some life changes. And she has been perfectly healthy since. Monsanto is the largest multinational GMO bioengineering company. And it's just nobody that creates pesticides and manufactures all of this stuff should have anything to do with our food. That right there is a red flag. So I don't know how anyone could think that any of that is okay. Poison, food, they don't go together. It's common sense, it's not science. I just hope that being here and seeing my healthy, beautiful little girl here Maybe, you know, one of us could make a difference in someone's life that maybe is going through something with their child, you know, what the way I was going through with her. And I was fortunate enough to stumble upon this information and I ran with it. So I just hope that anybody, if you know anybody that's going through this, please let them know this is not like some hippie mumbo jumbo. It's true, it is bad for you. It will cause digestive issues, skin problems. I can't even go into all the stuff that was wrong with her. She was on antibiotics at least two or three times a month. It was just horrific. She has not taken medicine in three years. She is fine. But please just spread the word. I am here today to let you guys know about my personal experience because I do take this Monsanto thing personally because it affected my family. And I almost lost a family member because of it. And I don't care who thinks I'm crazy, you know what, I'm still gonna keep talking. And I'm gonna keep spreading my truth and hopefully make a difference in another mother's life or another child's life. Because these kids are the ones that are gonna have to deal with it later on and their children. Okay, so we need to keep them healthy and keep their minds right and teach them the truth so they can keep it going. She and I are marching here today. I'm marching for her. I'm marching for every single child here, all of the children across the world, anybody that has been affected by this horrific company that has no business even existing. And that's why we're here. And I hope that's why you guys are here too. From Chicago Anonymous, Monsanto, you should have expected us. Tron T. Juan was born in 1986 with one hand and no legs. Like three million other Vietnamese people, she is a victim of dioxin poisoning from Agent Orange. Her birth defects were a direct result of her parents' exposure to this terrible poison. American scientists in Monsanto and Dow Chemical knew about the extreme dangers of dioxin, 
while the United States was dumping 20 million gallons of Agent Orange on South Vietnam from 1961 to 1971. As you may know, GMOs and the companies that promote them are extremely powerful forces in all levels of government. Um, it's taken us, the, I guess, the years since then to promote, I guess, education, understanding, and a counter-argument to the things that our legislators are hearing from the biotech industry. But it's not enough to get people educated. Our legislators are not voting against us because they don't understand. They're voting against us because they are heavily influenced by corporate dollars and because they do not hear enough from their constituents. I want to repeat that they do not hear enough from their constituents. They think that they can vote against us and our rights and our interests and no one will notice.
for the first time in uh, American history, people eat more pounds of food at restaurants than they buy at grocery stores. So it's very important that we're conscious not only of how we eat and what's inside of our food, but that the workers are taken care of, and that means having things like earned sick time. Getting a minimum of $15 when you work at a restaurant is really what we need. That should be a start for things. And, uh, and healthcare. If people go to work and you're eating organic food, but the workers are sick while they're serving it because they can't afford to take a day off because they don't have any days off, well, that's a problem. So we have to be inclusive. We have to be broad. Let's connect this struggle. We are here with you as the Restaurant Opportunity Center. The labor movement and the fair food movement and the GMO-free and organic movement need to become one together. Re very recent shareholders meeting this past week, there was a large rally there and people going in fighting for 15, 15 dollars an hour, minimum wage. That needs to be respected. Also, inside the shareholders meeting, some of those big 1% of shareholders they actually proposed that McDonald's start educating people about the benefits of GMOs. I work at Chipotle, oh, and they've yeah. been G no, seriously, they've been GMO free for a while. They, they made the announcement recently. They're the first major restaurant chain to ever have done it. They are leading the way in a lot of areas. We are from the Dill Pickle Food Co-op. We are a community-owned grocery store in Logan Square uh, with a focus on local sourcing, on organic sourcing. Um, and we're here to march today to, uh, to spread the message that I think is, is at the heart of this struggle, and that's ownership. Uh, who, owns, who owns the land? Uh, who owns the seeds? Who, who are the middlemen in all the transactions? Uh, and with a community-owned grocery store, the profits go back into the community that it serves. I have a book here that I've been reading, Poison Spring. And in Poison Spring, it states that the US EPA is the most corrupt agency in the United States. And the reason why, because the decisions that they make among all the other agencies is the most important decision that they make because it determines the health and welfare of the public here in the USA. And they haven't even banned Roundup, where the World Health Organization says it's a probable cause of cancer. Concerned about what's happening to our food because of GMOs and Roundup. I want to share for a moment my family story. My husband and my son both have celiac disease, and I have gluten sensitivity. And my husband was so sick he could have died. Um, he didn't know he had celiac disease. And none of us can eat gluten or we get very sick. And we also feel sick when we eat GMOs. So we do everything that we can to avoid eating GMOs. GMOs! People have the right to know! Their offices. Cook organic, not the planet. Cook organic, not the planet. Cook organic. Oh, salute everybody. Thank you. I've got an idea. I just so happen to have a toll-free phone number that can connect us to the Senate President's office, John Cullerton. If he's going to stand between us and our right to know, I think it's time we give him a call and let him know how that makes us feel. So, I need you to take out your phones. I'm not even kidding. Get your phone out right now. I saw you take a picture. I know you've got it with you. So you're going to call this number. You'll hear a recording of my beautiful voice. And you'll be connected to his office. And you just need to let the Senate President know that it is our right to know what we are eating, what we are feeding our children, and we will not tolerate his, his delays and the blockage of our right to know in Illinois. So the phone number is 888-498-2945. Again, 888-498-2945. I see many of you are still leaving voicemails. This is good.